Tu maru maru no Te tua te whatui a puti Kati te rohau ki peka peka Ara mai rā te karere Ko pōna tūri Uia mai ki hangare a whanui Te tiki tiki o Kia ora, um, my name's uh, Karita Fatuita Strickland um, Born and bred in um, Kahununu Well actually I was born in Murupara And lived there for nine years then um, we moved to Hastings. Uh, both my parents are from this this area, one from Wairo and one from Mohaka. Um, I've uh, been working now for the Hawke's Bay District Health Board for coming on 12, 13 years um, as a kaitaka wainga or a Māori liaison, so to say. Um, so I was based in the Child Development Services, well it was Child Development Unit then, as a um, kaitaka wainga. And um, no one really knew what my role was or how it would work. And so coming into this position, I sort of had to, um, I don't know, create it myself with with my other work colleagues, you know, with, with the other um, prof- professionals that worked in the Child Development Unit. Um, so they got me doing um, DNAs, like um, did not attend, so I had to follow up with Māori children that didn't attend clinics or weren't coming in to see a paediatrician, so um, I was doing that for a little while, but then um, uh, it sort of got a little bit... Um, it, it was like I they didn't know where to use me or how to use me, so... Um, the service manager says, well, maybe, Creedy, we'll, we'll get you to go into children's ward and you can help up out there and when we get Fano coming in, you can, you know, go and introduce yourself and we'll see how it goes from there. So over the years it's developed and now um, what I do is I'm working at all levels and um, working right across the board, mainly with our children and their families here in the hospital. So... Um, yeah, and the position is being looked at again, so now there are one, two, three kaitaka wainga, and we're, and we're based in different areas of the hospital, so I, like I said, I'm in Peds and also up in the tower block uh, working with our adults, and then you've got another kaitaka wainga who works in the villas, so all those appointments, and um, up on the medical wards, and then you've got another kaitaka wainga that works in... Um, ICU, ED, AAU, coronary care, so the intensive um, services. And um, now and then we we have to overlap and go into each other's services and, and help out in there. So, yeah, that's a, probably what I'd, you know, how I'd explain my role. Um, our, our GM at the moment is looking at the roles and there is restructure in the roles. Um, they're looking at uh, turning the roles into navigators. So that, and she's uh, requested that we, instead of working on the floor with our whanau, that we sort of come up, because there's not enough of us, we come up and start working with the service managers. So implementing from there and then filtering it down into the the rest of the staff and the DHB. There's lots of issues that our whānau come up against, but um, one that probably stands out for me is the health literacy. So, um, I mean, some of the basic things like communication between the doctor and the patient. Um, I don't, how do I, how can I describe it? Like, I always see um, you know, like I'm always talking with a doctor or with a nurse and saying, um, "Can you break the Can you break the corridor down? Can you break what you've just said to the patient? Can you break it down some more?" And they'll look at me like, um, 
I know what you're saying, but I don't know how to make it any simpler. And so what what we normally do is, or what I normally do is, I'll go to the doctor, well, can you tell me what's wrong with the patient? And so he or she, the doctor, will say, well, he's got a this, this, and this. And I go, yep. And what does that mean? And he looks at me and he'll go, it means he's got this, this, and this. And I'll go, yeah. So does it mean this? And the doctor will go, no. Okay, okay, well, I still don't get it. So what I'm trying to explain is, what I say to the doctor is, I'm not dumb, and I don't get what you've just said to that family. So how do you expect them to, you know, how do you expect them to understand what you've just told them? And so um, we break it right down. So he'll break it right down until I, I say, yeah, I got it. So if I went to the whanau and said, da-da-da-da-da, that would be correct. He'd go, yes. So... I normally go back to the whānau and go, this is what the doctor meant, da 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 And so um, I don't do that unless the, the whānau asks me. So what normally happens is I'll go to the whānau and I'll say, what did the doctor say to you? What did you get from his court at all? Nine times out of ten they'll go, I don't know. I don't know. He he said it's got something to do with my, my leg or my arm or you know my back, and I'll go, Oh, do you want to know what's wrong with it? Yeah. Do you want me to go find out? Yes, please. And so that's that's where it starts from. So I'll go back to the doctor, to the nurse, and say, "Can you explain to me what went on with what went on with you know horny or what went on with Deepaker or whatever?" Yeah. And so that's part of the health literacy is a big one. You know. Um, What I find in my role is when you when you come into a whānau, it's, it's that rapport. You've got to break down those barriers. There's, there's something there that we have as Māori when it becomes kānohi ki te kānohi. You know, it's... it's um, it, I don't know, it's all that whakapapa and that whakawhanaungatanga that goes on between the patient and, and myself, as well as the other kaitaka wang. You know, we're trying to build... We're trying to to weave something together so that we have something in common. That's what I seem to find when I'm working with with Fano is finding what is the you know, what is it that that I can pull from that Fano as well as them pulling from me. And then sometimes it happens just like that. We've got a connection and most times it's because we're Māori. I believe it's the it's your first interaction. Like um, I always go kia ora or tēnā koe to the to the patient, kia ora, and, and it just it's just a natural thing. Kia ora when I see another Māori, it's kia ora, and so already the the wall is dropping. So um, I think what could help. I mean, there's lots of things that could help, but you know, and I don't, and I don't want to be picky, but I, I think. Um, pronunciation is getting that that pronunciation of that name getting it you know if if you don't know it if you don't know how to pronounce a name like my name is Karita Fatsuita now I was called all sorts you know and and so it, it does mean a lot to me when someone can pronounce my name correctly and um I don't know, it just makes me feel like a nobody when when I'm a patient and a doctor comes in or a nurse comes in and can't even say my name. It's like, well, what do I mean to you? Do I mean anything to you? Um, and when they, when I see that a nurse has, has um, tried really hard or gone out to find out how do I say that name properly before I go into the patient, it means a lot to me, so I, I know it means a lot to our Fano too because they turn around and say, oh, just tell them to call me Ra, you know, when it might be Rangi. Just tell me to call me John when it might be Hone. You know, so, um, yeah, the pronunciation would help. Uh, another example I can, um, you know, I, I'd suggest to our staff is, um, is understand that 
Māori, we, we're not individuals. We come as a group. We come as a, as a wider whānau. So it's not just me, my partner and my children, or me and my mother and father, or me and my brothers and sisters. It's me, mum and dad, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties, cousins, even my best friends, you know. We're like a hapu. We, we, it's... When something goes down with a Māori on the ward, especially if there's a tūpāpaku, if, if one of our whānau have passed away, I always say to staff, we've got to move fast. If you don't want all these people coming into the room now, then we need to take the tūpāpaku to the end of the, um, the ward. So, you know, put them in the, in the end room, in the, in the, at the end room of the ward, so that way whānau are just coming to that, they're not troopsing all the way through the ward. So those are some of the tips that I give our staff, like move fast, put them into an empty room, you know, start shuffling the patients around. They don't understand, the staff don't understand that, how do I put this, um, there's a, you've got a patient and staff will just always focus on the patient, talk, talk, talk to the patient, but actually that patient, like I just said, is made up of a wider, you know, there's a wider whānau, hapu, that make this this person, eh? and so when it comes to discussing uh, treatment or discussing, yeah, the treatment of this person, it's actually the slot too that they need to consider, and sometimes I, I feel like they, they just won't go wider, they won't, they just go like, Oh no, I'm just going to stick to the patient, that's the patient, and I'm just going to ask the patient, but it's like they don't get that the patient will take the, the cue from nanny or koro or husband or wife, and so they need to consider that. Some are, but a lot of times they just focus straight on the patient and, instead of that wider group. Karakia, that's very important to Māori. So, you know, um, Māori might not be preaching or be spiritually active as in going to church and all that sort of stuff, but when they're in need and when they're going into a, an operation or we've had a tūpāpaku or whatever, karakia, we always karakia, karakia. Over here in Māori Health, we karakia twice a day. So we, we start with karakia and we end with karakia. And for, for me, that's it's a beautiful thing, um, it, it grounds me, so I come in from, you know, although I have, I'm at home and I'm, I cut a care at home, not that I say I cut a care every day, but I cut a care at home, but here it's every, it's every day, so we know, cut a care, then we're off to do our work, come back, at the end of the day, cut a care again, so that's very important to us, cut a care, you know, um, and patience, always, always have Yep, I'll have a karakia, you know, because that, that's the service that our kaumātara offer. Would you like karakia? Oh, yes, please. Can you give me karakia? Can you give me karakia? Yes, yeah, so. We do, we do himine. We're not, we're, we don't normally do waiata up on the wards. We might do waiata when it's Christmas time, go around doing the Christmas carols. We'll, we'll sing there, but as they're open to singing up on the ward, but most of the time when we're singing up there, it's himine. We're doing our himine. So um, we do have church services in whānau and people, you know, patients' rooms. So the patient might, or the whānau might say, are we able to have karakia here? And we normally stick to the 7 o'clock karakia. Come in for karakia at 7 o'clock. So the wards, are, the wards that I work in are getting um, used to that sort of practice, whereby, oh, you know, this whānau is going to have karakia at 7 o'clock. And we may have about 20 people coming in, and we'll have karakia around the patient, him in there. We will do waiata, yeah, we will do waiata then, and that goes on for about half an hour to three quarters of an hour, and then all the whānau leave, and we left with the patient, yeah. What happens when a, um, a patient leaves the hospital is most times you're meant to have an MDT. So when when your disciplines all come together and we say, um, you know, we've got the OT in place, we've got the PT in place, we've got um, home care in place, and we've got this service in place, and we're going to refer out to this service. So mo like most of the times you'd like to think that happens, but 
we do have patients that um, you know they've been in the in the hospital for a couple of weeks and discharged and sometimes I'm missed I'm not um, informed that this patient is being discharged you know so it's come up that I don't know horny has been discharged okay so so I'll go up onto the ward the next day and he's gone and it's like oh, okay he's he was discharged hopefully everything's in place but um, you know, I have experience where I'm up on the ward and we're around the workstation and a pharmacist might come across and say, oh, I got a phone call from whoever to another pharmacist and I'm right there doing in the notes and what have you and I'll inquire because I've heard the patient's name being mentioned and I'll go, oh, well, what's happened? And then they'll say something like, um, oh, he's phoned in, he's having trouble with his heart, and he can't get his medication, you know. So you're still trying to inquire, and it's like, yeah, well, what happened? And they go, I said, well, why did he ring us? You know, that's another question. Why did he ring the hospital? And they'll go, because there was an 0800 number. That was the only 0800 number on the form that he's taken home. And I'll go, right. So, you know, so I start to worry because He's a patient that I've seen for, oh, he's been up on the ward, and it's like, goodness. And the day before, they've rung up saying, you know, he needs this and this, so you, you'll make sure that these services are put in place. So I question the pharmacist, I say, so what will happen if he doesn't get that, that medication or that medication? Well, he could go into heart failure, or he could have a heart attack, or da 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 so. So... Is it really important that he has these medications right now? And they go, definitely important. Okay, so how much is the prescription? And the, the pharmacist will work and that goes, it's about $52. You know, so you get all that sort of drama. So, yeah, and so what does that mean? So how's he going to get it if he's got no money? Well, we don't know. So, you know, we as... Well, I won't say, well, I could say, we as Māori, it's like, how are we going to fix this? And so what ended up happening was um, myself and one of the kaumātua, because unbeknown to me, he was a whanaunga of the kaumātua, and the kaumātua says, we'll go out and get the medication. And I says, really? And he goes, no, we'll go and get the medication and we'll take it to this, this patient. So I, I see, what I said to um, the pharmacist was, can you just check the medication? Has he got repeats on it? Does it? How long does the medication last for? If we're going to pay 52 bucks, how long does that last for? So he checked it out and he says, oh, it lasts for a month. And I says, well, why can't you put repeats on it? And he goes, well, we could, but I need to get the doctor to write that prescription out. So, you know, so I sort of try and put that sort of stuff in place. It's like common sense would tell you, this guy hasn't got much money. Put repeats on it. I says, can you do a repeat for the year? <laughs> you know, so that he's only paying 52 bucks for medication for a year. He says, the longest we can do is for three months. I says, well, that's better than one month. Can you get that all checked out? So the pharmacist says, I'll do that and I'll do, you know, I'll do my bit. So he, way he went, he done his lot. He rings me back and he says, yep, I've got it all done and it's been faxed across to the chemist. So we go get the medication. He's got repeats on it. Um take it to the patient who is like just so overwhelmed and appreciative that you know he actually thought he was going to die that morning because he didn't have his medication and he was yeah so he's telling us all this and it's like well you're gonna be fine and I said you know and so um and then you know I have dialogue with the pharmacists and the doctors up there saying what are we going to do that cost us 52 dollars but it would actually cost us 600 plus if we said to him come back into hospital you know, it, so I, I think the health system for me is like, there's something wrong there. Why would we pay 600 and something dollars to give a man a bed for the night when we could give him $52 and keep him well for three months? It doesn't make sense, you know. So so I have those discussions with um, with the pharmacist or with the doctors up on the ward. It just it's probably impossible to have one of us giving the message to the Fano or one of us um, yeah being with all these Fano in the hospital and giving out the message 
there's just not enough people. So I think education again is with that health literacy and how do you, how do you communicate with people, and um, uh, you know because a lot of whānau go, I can bet your bottom dollar he would have went, yeah I'm all right, no no yeah I'm all right, you know have you got everything in place and you got this yeah I'm all right, but you know it's not until we come in and then we can we can dig that little bit deeper we can get a bit more personal we can we can get a bit more intimate with our with our own with our whānau and so that's when we find out it's like we got to we've got to go we got to dig dig deeper a lot of the nurses and doctors are surface but we go in deeper and and we talk about the whānau you know and that's when we find out oh his wife is in palliative care. He's got a Down syndrome child. You know, all we we find all that stuff. So, it's like, um, like I've said again, working with that wider whānau, eh? Because that's what makes up who we are. Eh? It's not just me. It's, it's my mokos. It's my mum and dad. It's my partner. You know, it's my children. Yeah. So, communication and asking him. You know, had I have come in and says, right, you know. Have you have you got this and have you got that? So who's going to do this, and who's going to do that? What I do find is our medical staff, they do a good job. You know, they do a really good job, but that's all they're concentrating on is the medicine, the medicine and the wound. You know, whatever they're trying to heal. Whereas myself, I'm, you know, working in that holistic. That holistic model is, what about your fano? What about you know? Your wairua, where's that sitting? What about your hiningaro? Where's that sitting? And you know, the tinana, the whole lot. So, yeah, we're fishing. I'm always fishing, finding out about that one, and about that one, and about that one, and about that one. And um, it just it seems to give me a better picture of the person, the patient, when I know a bit of that and that and that and that. So I don't know whether I told you I was a, I'm a social worker. I've got I've got a degree in social work. Well, I've got a double degree. I've got a degree in Māori and degree in social work, and um, I do a lot of social work, working with our whānau. And have now I'm encouraging SIFs to have the FGCs in our whare, and that's at the request of whānau. So whānau have come here, come to Mahiro Whare, um, and felt the wairua, felt the comfort of being in this environment and have requested that they have the FGCs here or requested that they come and have whānau hui here. I'm working with a couple of the psychologists on the FAS program, the Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder program. And, you know, we're bringing women into the whare to get the, the what is it, the outcome of the assessments that our psychologists have done on, um, on the mums. So um, I don't know whether it would work with with uh, European or you know other ethnic groups but Māori seem to be at peace or at one coming into the whare you know and we can we can receive or they receive a lot of information um, it just seems to be a bit more I don't know whakato pleasing settling for them to be in this environment in the whare so we're what I do notice is staff are coming here too. So staff are requesting, can we have our whānau hui here? Can we have our, um, we have vulnerable women's. So I don't know whether you've heard of vulnerable women's or it's it's a group that's uh, run nationally. It's now called Maternal Wellbeing and Child Protection Agency Group, something like that. But it used to be called Vulnerable Women's. And so um, discussing pregnant women um, you know, that are vulnerable out there in the community. And so that, that goes on a weekly basis where we discuss what's going on with, with the patient or with the person, because she's not a patient. She's out in the community. And so we're trying to wrap around the services before this child's born or by the time this child's born, there's going to be some good links she's wrapped around and she's, you know, supported out there in the community. In that group, it's 
it can get quite lonely being, I feel, the minority in a group. And at times it can be quite demanding. Um, being that one, Māori, you know, like, um, I'm expected, this is, this is my, this is through my eyes, I'm expected to um, give the view of Māori in these groups. So I'm, you know, I'm asked to sit on um, the maternity build, I'm asked to sit in vulnerable women's, I'm asked to sit in other services and give, or make sure the Treaty of Waitangi is going right and cultural training's going right, you know, um, and I'm expected to give the view of Māori's in these groups and it can be quite um, pressurising or quite lonely because it's like you've got 20 Pākehās and you've got one Māori sitting around the group and when I'm trying to give my whakaro or my thoughts or um, views on what should be added into the project or added into the group or this is how we work with Māori, my views ain't taken that, what's the word? They're taken lightly, you know, and so at times I've always wished that it would that it would be 10 Pākehās, 10 Māori, you know, or, um, and yeah, I'm not, I mean, my colleagues are awesome, so don't get me wrong, my Pākehā colleagues are awesome, but we, we, they don't, my views can be taken lightly at times, yeah, they don't listen, you know, sometimes I'm giving advice, but it's sort of falling on deaf ears. You know, we have been challenged at times, Māori Health, uh, like, so what are your quals? You know, we'll get nurses asking, what are your quals? <laughs> and it's like, um, well, yes, you know, because we all know they've got a degree in nursing. And, you know, and sometimes when we come back and go, well, yeah, we're all, we're all qualified here. You know, we have a registered nurse in the team. The rest of us have degrees in social work, you know, some of us in management. And they're quite surprised that um, we hold degrees some of us double degrees, so some of us masters, some of us doctorate, you know, got doctorates, so they, they do get surprised and um, uh, I, I think, I think that's part of the reason is um, uh, they just don't think we're as, we're as clever as them, or could be as clever as them. Um, and I'm, I'm up front, you know, like I'll tell them, I don't know what you're talking about. I've got nothing to be ashamed of, embarrassed about. You know, like um, like I said, I'm on the build for maternity. Well, I don't know what a, what a midwife needs. So of course I'm going to listen to what they're saying. But I do know what we need culturally. I do know how Māori operate. I do know what Māori need. You know, so it's like, give me that respect. You know, you're not Māori. I know what we need. I know how we practice. I know what our culture and our values are, and I'm very skilled in that, and that's just from living it, being it. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's probably where I feel let down from the group, is they don't give me that, that mana as a Māori speaking for what our needs are. I know, um, I do know that our CEO is, has made a KPI that we would be employing 10% more Māori into the DHB. Now I think that's an awesome, an awesome move. As long as they're not going to the kitchens and to orderlies, as long as they're getting into positions, you know, like we've got a lot of Māori nurses out there that aren't working in the hospital. We've got a lot of Māori social workers out there that aren't working in the hospital. We've got a lot of Māori managers out there that aren't working in the hospital. So as long as, you know, we're recruiting into some of those senior positions, um, I've, I'd, I'd really like to see more Māori social workers up on the ward. And um, that way, yeah, at least you'd have two two of us up on the ward working, you know, in children's ward, we don't have any Māori nurses. So it can be really hard. So when we were recruiting for a social worker in there, 
I was pushing. Yes, I agree. She has to have the have everything else that the Pakia has, but what won her over was for me. She was Māori, so she could understand it, and it's made my job a lot easier. I don't have to be in children's ward every day. Now that we've got a Māori social worker on the ward, she knows she knows how um, how we roll. She knows how Māori how Māori um, act, and they're not having to call on me every day. You know. Krita, can you come in here? We've got a Māori whānau in here and they're blah, 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 blah. They actually think I'm a security guard. You know, they, they treat me like I'm a... It's like, I'm not a security guard. <laughs> you know, and then I'll go in and I'll go, what what happened? You know, and then they'll tell me and it's like, well, what do you expect? What do you expect? You know, very judgmental. So also in my role, I, I work with um, the Pacific Island groups and I'll work with anybody if they request that I help them out. So one day I was um, on the ward and I had this uh, PI, Pacific Islander, come up and ask me if I'd work with her whānau and I says, yeah, okay, well, what do we need to do? She goes, well, we're going to go see the consultant and he's going to um, tell us what's going on. I says, oh yeah, well you fill me in a bit. And so she says, well she's all clear. And I says, well, what do you mean? Well she's come back from uh, Palmerston and she's told the whanau that we're all, she's all clear. So she's just got to go see the doctor today and um, he's just going to, I don't know, fill her in. I say, oh yeah, sweet. So went across and we, we saw the um, the consultant and I was sitting in the, in the so there was about six, Seven of us, and myself included, Fano, you know, her brother and his wife and a sister and what have you, and the patient. And she had her child with her who was out playing out in the waiting room. So we go into the room, and it's a small room, so, you know, even that is, it's like, you know a Fano are coming, you know, Fano is coming. Why don't you have enough seats for everybody but not even so we're in this little surgeon's um, room and he starts talking and then um, all of a sudden the patient just turned off him she was like Vonk. she just wouldn't you know say so, so you're the doctor you're I'm the patient you're talking with me and and she's just she just went just turned off him and um, later on when we got out of the out of the um, the meeting I says what went on in there and um, she said he told me I was all clear before this was before this was when she was down in Palmerston the doctor said to her it's all clear there's no, no more I can do for you it's, that's it there's no more I can do for you well the patient took that as I'm all clear I'm fixed I haven't got cancer so she was all excited to come back here to see this consultant who told her something else and so she got really confused and she got quite angry and so um, from there I had to arrange Fano Hui and figure out what is the breakdown how much English does she understand and it was very limited her English and um, but she would talk to me and I could talk to the Fano and she would talk to me and so from there I, I, I knew we had to get a translator and for her to be fully informed of what was going on with her, she needed a translator. So I um, requested a translator for this patient and um, the translator went in. It was the best move they could ever do. She was so clear, you know, she was informed, fully informed. So what had happened was from her words, these are her words, I don't want to see that a consultant again. He abused me. This is, these are her words, not mine. He abused me. They abused me. That's what she called the two consultants, abused me. So I was like, whoa, that's quite harsh words to use. But um, I think because of her limited English, that's the only word she could think of to, to label these consultants. So we got a translator in. Now this woman is thinking of... Um, doing chemo when she she said no to the consultants no I don't want chemo and the consult consultant says well you know it's a bit expensive you've got a choice of this treatment and that treatment and that treatment's really expensive so um 
you know, it's probably time you just go home and enjoy your family and, you know, you do this and you do that and just enjoy life and enjoy your family. And, I, you know, I was thinking, who are you to tell her, because it costs this much, you take this, you take this option? And I sort of, I do say that, you know, I sort of said that to um, his nurse. And, um, yeah, so I can get into some challenging situations myself, you know, whereby it's like, uh-uh. <laughs> you, why are you judging this family? Because, you know, because they're, they're a Pacific Island, you naturally assume that they've got no money. He didn't look at, because they talked about their belief. They, they were very, you know, right into the church. They're very, um, their, their God is powerful, you know, how they believe in God and they, they wanted to look at all these other options. You know, they, they didn't need this doctor saying, well, you can't afford that one, so we won't look there. Or he didn't even give them, there's this service that you can look at, because it was, in his mind, too far, re you know, too far fetched for the Fano to, to be even looking at paying that much money for um, the service. Well, anyway, to cut a long story short, when the translator come in, she told the Fano, take the option of treatment. <laughs> you know, she advised treatment, and it's like. What? you got a doctor saying blah, 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 and you've got this translator, translator believing, you know, you have every right. You know, it's like, she's young. This woman's only 40, 42. Wouldn't she want to fight? She's got a, she's got a child, you know? She's got a husband. Who wants to die? Who wants to go home and, and give up? You know, you're going to go for every option. She's got a big whanau who can support her financially. It's just it's just sad that sometimes we, um, uh, sometimes people are just narrow-minded, you know, and just, yeah, I, I don't know how to put it any other way. I just see them as, uh, you may be a doctor, and yes, you have your rights as a doctor, but we, we, we are a whānau who can make decisions, who can <coughs> come together as a group, as a, as a whānau and offer each other and support each other to get through these, these hard times, you know? I mean, it wouldn't be easy for me to say, yep, okay, I accept that. I'm going to, no way. I'm going to, I'll fight to the bitter end, you know, if it was me in, in, in that position. I'd go to the next person and go to the next person and go to the next person. Help me, help me, help me. No, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear go home, creator, and die. I want to hear let's try this, or, let's try that. Because I bet you if it was his his wife or his daughter, and I actually challenged the, the nurse like that, if it was your wife or your daughter sitting in that seat, would you let her just walk away and say, okay, he told me go home and die? I doubt it. I'd be fighting for it. Another thing that, that helps working with Fano is Māori are very visual. So don't just go da 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 da. Show me a picture. You know, there's been times when I've been into a, 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 a consultancy. Um, or you know when the consultant is talking with the patient and the consultant is going this and this and this and this and this and I'm trying to keep up with the consultant and then I'll go can you draw us a picture so we had a woman come into maternity and she had a her heart is stuffed but she was pregnant and so they, they were they were um, concerned that her heart mightn't hold out when she had this baby so it was a lot of talking. So in the end, I says, can you draw a picture? And she goes, oh, I'm not a very good drawer. I says, doesn't matter, I'll draw your heart. So I just drew a circle. <laughs> you know, so she drew the circle of, she drew a heart. And then I says, now just show her what's happened. You know, because this girl thought she had this and this. But actually, when the doctor drew it and, you know, and we went through it with her, so what part of the heart is not working? Well, she says, well, actually, the heart is bigger. I says, well, there you go. 
You know, she said enlarged heart. I knew what enlarged heart was, but the patient didn't. So, you know, it, just all that sort of stuff. We're very visual. And so this, this Samoan whanau, they asked if they could see the x-rays from when it was first diagnosed to the last x-rays. And in, in between, so this was from the whanau, the whanau said to me, in between, they thought there was this big mass of cancer on her lungs. And then when they saw the x-rays last week, it was like a dot and a dot and a dot. And that gave them hope. It was like, whoa. You know, it was that was that was just awesome for them to see. So visually, we always got it's like show me. Show me, show me, and I can do it. If you show me, I can do it. Don't tell me, show me. And I get that doctors and nurses are real busy, but that does help. I'm I'm when I talk to, you know, other groups like the psychiatrists or the psychologists that I'm working with, I says when you when you're working with Māori PowerPoints, make it simple as PowerPoint. Show us what's going on. Show us what what the alcohol does to the um to the baby, you know. Just show me a picture. And a picture says a million says a million words, I say. Very visual, Marty. And what's that word? Textile or whatever. Touchy feely. Maru maru no te tua te fatui apiti.